money arata. Do you know what is most ironic about the future of money? Even 100% digital, Bitcoin is the most sound money that has been invented to date. Sound money is strong money. Firstly, we need to understand the biggest difference between Bitcoin and dollars, euros, or any other state currency. The fact that Bitcoin is a digital currency is not the biggest difference. Being digital is not exclusive to Bitcoin. Because you already use digital money to do your shopping, whether you use dollars, euros, or any other currency. The numbers that you see when you open your bank account do not mean that the corresponding quantity actually exists physically in a safe somewhere with a label stating that that money belongs to you. And when you make a payment using your credit card, it also does not mean that there is a real transfer of banknotes leaving the safe in your bank and going to the safe of the shop where you made the purchase. All transactions have been digital for many years. So being digital is not exclusive to Bitcoin. The main difference is that Bitcoin does not have a central controlling body. The US dollar is controlled by the government of the United States. The euro is controlled by the European Union, but Bitcoin is controlled by the network of Bitcoin users who decided that it is sound enough to be used as money. This is not financial advice. Please read the full disclaimer before proceeding. Anything can be used as money when you have the intention to use it as a means of exchange. Imagine a prison where a person who has cigarettes can decide not to smoke a cigarette but keep it to exchange it for something else. Or imagine a pig farmer who decides to save some pigs in order to exchange it uh, for some of the neighbor's corn. The problem is that it is not easy to keep cigarettes and keep pigs. Cigarettes can get wrinkled, pigs can get sick. So although anything can be used as money, not everything is sound and trustworthy. Therefore, throughout history, people have ended up developing money in the form of coins made of precious metals, which later on became coins made from more common metals, followed by paper money, until these values became a mere digital representation. Money is not necessarily a paper note. Money is an idea with legitimacy. And this idea can be anything that people accept as a value and therefore functions as a means of exchange. But the big problem here is that not all money is sound. Some currencies are stronger, others are weaker. Weak money has the tendency to lose value with time. Strong money has the tendency to maintain value or even gain value. And anything that we decide to use as money ends up creating an important incentive to produce more of it. See, if my neighbors from other farms find out that I had managed to exchange my pigs for a lot of corn, it is likely that my neighbors will also want to farm pigs. And if all the neighbors around start farming pigs, there might be an excess of pigs, so then pork will decrease in value because there is a high supply of pork causing inflation. And it doesn't matter whether it is cigarettes, or pigs, or corn, or salt gold, or banknotes with historic figures printed on them. What do all these types of currency have in common? People always want more. And once several people agree that something can be used as store of value and medium of exchange, this immediately starts a race to obtain more of this type of currency. When someone controls the production of a good that is used as money, they may want to produce even more of that good, which ends up devaluing that currency. However, one aspect that makes money sound is protection against devaluation. Nowadays, printing money is easy. This was not the case 100 years ago, before the world was using gold as a monetary standard. So to print money, you needed a corresponding amount in gold. This is called the gold standard. 
at the time, gold was the most sound money available because of the scarcity, the difficulty for people to obtain more, and the difficulty in obtaining larger quantities of a form of money that is what makes the money more sound. It is not a good idea to use pigs as money. Pigs need care, food, and space. They can make a lot of mess. But the main problem is this. It is very easy for everyone to decide to farm pigs. If pork was an exchange currency, inflation would occur. On the other hand, it is very difficult for gold inflation to happen because it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort for miners to extract more gold. All the currencies in the history of humanity have been subject to this risk of devaluation, and the result is that you become poorer. State currencies without backing can be issued, can be printed by governments whenever they decide, leaving you poorer. Today, the only standard of state currencies is the trust in the government. That is why they are called fiduciary currencies. The word fiduciary comes from the Latin, fidere, which is associated with faith. Fiduciary money is the money based on faith, trust that the government will honor the commitment to the money's value. So individuals are in a weak position when the money is centralized. When the government decides to print more money, you become poorer. In simple terms, the more currency is in circulation, it is less scarce and therefore it is less valued. Some theorists argue that issuing a lot of money leads to inflation, causing the money in your wallet to be devalued. But inflation is not the only problem with centralized money. Because when money is controlled by a government, the government can prevent you from buying certain things from one moment to the other. It can freeze your assets. It can confiscate your investments. It can make it difficult for you to transfer your money to other parts of the world. In addition, there is unequal power relationship between the individual and the power-holding intermediaries. To keep savings of government-issued money, you need a bank account. And to have a card, you need to be approved to be a customer of a credit card company. To invest, you need a broker. And each one of these intermediaries have their own rules about how you can and cannot use your money, and even they will charge you a very high fee to handle your money. In order to get the most out of your money, note that you need to agree with the rules set by those who are in power. The government can decide to change the rules at any moment. The intermediaries can decide to freeze your account. So, your money is not really yours. People who have money always have to be aware of the risks of a weak currency. Currency is weak when there is a risk of the government confiscating or freezing your assets, a risk of the financial institutions going bankrupt, a risk of the price of assets being very high and suddenly dropping. These are unlikely events, but one thing is guaranteed, the risk of inflation. You cannot leave your money idle because inflation will certainly reduce the purchasing power. These are the problems of centralized money that is not sound enough. Money needs to be sound. Bitcoin was programmed to be decentralized, scarce, and secure. That is why it is the most sound currency invented to date. Unlike state currencies, Bitcoin was created with no central controlling body. Instead, Bitcoin is controlled by the network of people who use it. The relationship is equal. It is horizontal, peer-to-peer, -peer, without any single individual deciding how the money will be issued or changing the rules of the game from one moment to the next. As Bitcoin is a computer program in a network of equals, it is technically impossible to change the fundamental rules. It was programmed to be scarce. No matter what happens, the Bitcoin program only allows less than 21 million units of that currency to be issued. So the reason Bitcoin is the most sound money possible is completely mathematical. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoins issued. Bitcoin is not issued by a central controlling body. New Bitcoin units are issued by a process called mining, which helps to control the Bitcoin network doing mathematical calculations to validate transactions. The more times go by, the more complex the mathematical calculations. You might try to buy a computing rig in order to issue more Bitcoins, 
But to resolve such complex mathematical calculations, the computers will need a lot of equipment and space and use a lot of energy. And you will end up spending more money than what you actually earn. All of this is on purpose. Bitcoin was programmed to be immune to the effect of a race to produce more money and generate inflation. A difficulty adjustment was programmed from the very beginning of Bitcoin. Even with all the volatility, the fluctuations, when you examine the history of the price of Bitcoin since 2008, you can see the appreciation. Despite the highs and lows, when you zoom out and you see the bigger picture, it is indisputable that the price of Bitcoin tends to rise in the long term. And that is not just speculation. Although there is speculation, the price goes up because of Bitcoin's intrinsic characteristic of becoming scarce over time. And that scarcity makes Bitcoin sound currency. This means that if you have Bitcoins and if you don't mind the short-term volatility, you are solidly protected from the inflation generated by the governments who are issuing weak currency with no backing. Bitcoin replaces central bodies and intermediaries with its own network of users. And you finally become the owner of your own money. As well as not being controlled by governments, Bitcoin eliminates other intermediaries, such as banks or credit card companies. Your Bitcoin is stored on a digital wallet within the Bitcoin network, and you can transfer any quantity of that money anywhere in the world, at any time, with just a few clicks, without paperwork or rules that are set by other people. The Bitcoin network does the job that banks used to do. It keeps your money, it checks that it exists, and it carries out transactions, except that Instead of the unfair relationship between you and the bank, the rules in the horizontal Bitcoin network are clear, programmed, and they are impossible to suddenly change. To make a transaction, you only need to know the destination address, the amount you want to send, and the priority rate that you wish to pay to complete the transaction. This way, you don't have to be providing your full name, your home address, date of birth, an identity number every time you want to make a transaction. Bitcoin is so sound that it has never been hacked, even though it is worth trillions. Bitcoin was invented in 2008, and since then there has never been a hacker attack capable of stealing coins, corrupting data, or bringing down the whole user network. The network is robust, it is secure. Yes, attacks can happen against the systems of the exchanges or of the users, but the Bitcoin network itself has never been hacked. And if you still have the outdated belief that Bitcoin is only used for illegal activities or money laundering, mm, you should do your homework. Every transaction made in the history of Bitcoin is registered in a public database called blockchain. Chain analysis shows that only a tiny portion of these transactions were for illegal activities. Just think about it. The US dollar is also used to buy illicit products, to employ criminals, to finance illegal activities. And nobody's telling you to stop using dollars. With Bitcoin, it is the same thing. But there is one difference. Bitcoin is not untraceable like a paper note. Since every transaction is recorded on a public database, the blockchain, even without being linked to a specific person, it is still possible to see the origin, the transaction, the destination, the amount of each transaction. And this helps the control bodies to be fighting crimes and finding those who are responsible. Bitcoin is sound because of the decentralization. This is the big difference that makes Bitcoin one of the greatest inventions ever. Bitcoin is a sound currency because it does not suffer from the risk of inflation, because the emission is scarce on purpose. Money is sound when it does not suffer the risk of bad, unexpected actions from corrupt or incompetent governments. Sound money is the money that you can use as you please without asking for permission from anyone. This is all related to decentralization. The big difference about Bitcoin is not about being digital or increasing in value or being innovative. The biggest difference with Bitcoin is simply that it does not have a central controlling body that can suddenly change the rules. There is no director, no CEO, no individual, no organization behind Bitcoin. There is no way for you to sue or to ban Bitcoin. There is no central point in Bitcoin that can be attacked as a weak point. There is no main server that can be bombed or deleted. 
There are certain regions in the world with a higher concentration of miners, however, this happens for optimization and efficiency, but if these regions stop being competitive, others will appear. Therefore, Bitcoin is very similar to the internet. It cannot be stopped. Bitcoin works 24 hours per day, every day. Bitcoin participants do not need to ask for authorization. People all over the world are taking part in Bitcoin because they see it as valuable and sound. Instead of just checking to see whether the price of Bitcoin has gone up or down, it can be more valuable to understand what makes a currency sound. Anything that a group of people decide to use as currency can be used, can be considered as means of exchange. But for billions of people around the world to accept, to use this thing as money, it has to be sound. And that is exactly what Bitcoin is. A digital, scarce, portable, secure currency with defined, clear rules and mainly not depending on a central controlling body. In other words, the future of money. So if you're interested to learn more, you can visit arata.se forward slash diamond hands.